Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting video where your boy, Yami Noob, drops some serious knowledge on you. If it isn't hard enough to ride in fair weather, welcome to a segment on how to ride in the rain. Sometimes it takes a minute to comprehend how difficult things will be from riding in the sun to riding in the rain. If you were ever unprepared in the rain but was caught in it, you might know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna give you the seven ways to ride better in the rain. Before we do though, you gotta know that I'm giving away some free bikes. Ninja 400, DRZ 400, and a CB650R. Man, they're looking good. Click the link below, go to yaminoob.co.co, not .com. Find a package, subscribe, and you'll be automatically entered to start racking up entries. It's the best way to get entered to win. For example, if you buy a tier two package for 20 bucks, you get 200 entries to win. You'll get access to our Discord server. Some levels allow for submissions for It Came From Craigslist. But if you prefer alternate methods of entering, you can also go to yaminoobmerch.com and shop away. Every dollar you spend gets you one entry to win. Nothing says Black Friday shopping like dropping a couple bills on some Christmas presents for your family and then winning a free bike. Now, let's get into this. The first item is be prepared. So you had a trip planned for the weekend, but now it's raining. Of course, you're still going. Canceling would be such a disappointment. The first thing to do for riding in the rain is to make sure you're prepared. You need to have adequate gear, the experience, and know exactly where you're going, and have the experience with the bike you're going to be riding. Riding for the first time on a new bike can be a daunting task, but don't ride it for the first time when you're about to go on a 300 mile trip down the coast. Fun fact, when I purchased my first motorcycle, a 2015 Yamaha R3, I actually had to ride it for the first week in the rain. There was a crazy downpour happening in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas. We got the most rain we've ever had in like 50 years or something, so I kind of did learn how to ride in the rain for my first time. I really don't recommend it. It was pretty scary. The rain is a very interesting challenge for most riders. It can be a very soothing experience with no issues, or it can become an absolute nightmare. If you don't prepare for the rain, your squid riding style is most likely going to suffer. One of the most important pieces of gear is anything that covers your body beyond a t-shirt and pants. Gloves might be something you forego in the sun, although I don't recommend it, but in the rain, water can lead to cold and numb fingers, ones that slip off the handlebars and levers, and you don't want to lose control of your bike. If you're caught in the rain and you don't have gear, brace yourself and avoid high speeds. Be prepared to stop or stay stopped or wait out the storm if it gets too bad. If you choose to ride in the rain because you have the gear, expect delays and a later arrival time. It's better to be late than in the hospital because you low sided on a slick surface. In speaking about gear as well, the other thing to keep in mind is that when you're wearing just a t-shirt and it starts to rain, you'd be amazed at how much little water droplets can hurt when you're going at speed. Wearing gear is not only safer, but it's way more comfortable when it's raining. Next up is stop when you have to. This one should go without saying, but you really need to consider the fatigue that rain has on your body. If you have any gaps in your clothing where you're getting wet or cold, the frequent stops are a necessity. Don't push yourself to make it to your destination with cold hands, soaked feet, or a helmet that keeps fogging up. Make as many stops as you deem necessary so you can make it to your destination safely. It's really easy to mentally persuade yourself into riding farther in the cold and wet condition than you're already in. When we're subjected to the elements but are focusing on a task at hand and using our concentration, we tend to forget the dangers of the environment. A lot of times we don't notice how much colder it becomes because we're too busy splitting firewood or shoveling snow. It's only when we go inside a warm house that we realize how bad the conditions were that we were enduring. The same principle applies to riding a motorcycle. You'll get comfortable, but it's only going to make things dangerous. There is no prize at the end of your journey for making it in one sitting. Even if you're commuting for 10 minutes, a lot can happen in a split second, let alone one minute. So accept that you may have to stop. Don't be afraid to stop either. If you think your tire is low on air, stop and check it. It's gonna suck because you're riding in the rain and you'll be getting wet, but it'll be worth it to know whether you're riding in dangerous conditions on a bike that needs air in the tires or not. The next item on our list is avoid road hazards. If the rain does anything really well is that it makes pretty much everything more dangerous to ride over. A lot of objects in and on the road during a dry day will become a slippery hazard in the rain. Painted lines especially, sewer covers, metal plates, and tar snakes become as slick as oil in the rain. Even dry cement such as when you enter a parking garage can be extremely slippery because you've been riding on it with wet tires. Now if it's the type of concrete that's a little more porous it's going to be fine, but I find that concrete parking garages with the super slick 
uh, concrete can be very slippery. Use extra caution when riding and try to avoid these hazards as much as possible. Don't accelerate when trying to ride over these objects because your rear wheel is going to spin and not in a cool way. The absolute worst time to ride in the rain is during the first half hour. When that water begins to soak the road, it'll begin forcing the oil, grease, and other crud from the road to the surface, making it slick. If you're caught in the rain, simply pull over and wait for this phenomenon to pass, then get back on the road. Or if you don't want to, just be mindful that that first 10 to 15 to 30 minutes of the rain is the most dangerous time. We already don't ride in the center of the lane, so being in the rain makes it no different. The center will be that much more dangerous when it's wet because it now has oil and water pooling up along with any pieces of floating debris. It's okay to swerve, but remember not to swerve as hard as you normally would on dry surfaces. Always be on the alert for road hazards and don't panic if you see one. Remember that dirt becomes mud and puddles can hide enormous potholes. Knowing your route before you take it and knowing where the dangerous parts of the road will be beneficial to you. As rain continues throughout the day, flooding becomes an issue and it's difficult to tell from a fogged up helmet or simply being on a bike. If you're gonna ride somewhere you haven't been before, it's advised that you postpone your trip until dry weather returns. Not knowing the roads you're about to travel on is risky even in fair weather, so when you add rain to the mix, you basically have a disaster waiting to happen. The next item is it's time for high viz. With the rain comes fogged up windows in cars, streaking wipers, and the total inability for drivers to see a motorcyclist. If you thought you were invisible in the sunlight, the rain is definitely going to amplify how little people can see you. Even if you are the greatest ninja stealth assassin on your motorcycle and refuse to wear high viz, when you ride in the rain, it should be an absolutely different story. People are just not going to see you, hear you, or know what direction you're coming from or even if they did they wouldn't have a clue keep at least one article of high vis on you or in your bike storage for the rain this would be the one time it actually works and saves you if you really don't believe in wearing it there's a big reason why first responders and road crews wear high vis especially in inclement weather just because they're working on the road next to a construction vehicle with stadium lighting or if the cop is directing traffic next to his cruiser with all the strobe lights on doesn't mean drivers still see them or notice them High vis in the rain and inclement weather is an absolute must. Become the traffic cone and you'll thank me when people stop trying to hit you. Riding style. As you enter the rain, you must remember that this is not the time to pop wheelies, lane split, or drag knee on every corner. Your riding style in the rain will be a uniquely different experience than on dry pavement. You're going to want to be as smooth as you possibly can. Avoid leaning and pick up the bike when you're in mid-corners and always be mindful of your speed. Accelerating too fast or braking too hard can cause you to skid or slip. Forget your right of way completely in the rain. It's better to live than to die trying to prove who had the right of way. Honestly, that's just good advice in general. You should keep roughly double the distance between yourself and cars, both in front of you and the ones behind you. And also, relax. This is the last thing you want to hear during an argument, but this is motorcycling and it's life or death. Chill out, my dude. You need to ride relaxed and let the bike do its thing. You're going to be holding on for dear life, so you might as well try to enjoy it. When you tense up on your handlebars, you tend to input too much and try to force the bike to do what you want. You'll also absorb a lot more of the bike's reaction on the roads, causing you to become exhausted and worn out faster. The thing to keep in mind is that when it's wet outside, the bike will probably slip and slide a little bit, but if you lighten up and let it work underneath you, you will probably be fine. Don't worry. The next item is gear. Now we already mentioned this a little bit, but one of the most important things to remember and have in the rain is proper riding gear. There's a huge difference in comfort between riding in the dry sun and then riding in the rain. When things get wet, they also get cold really fast. Gloves, boots, and jackets used for dry riding will not give the same level of protection in the rain. It's always suggested to have gear that's not only windproof, but also waterproof. If you're a squid, then you're sort of SOL. A t-shirt, a hoodie, or other cotton-based articles of clothing will give very little protection in the rain, and when they're soaked, they're going to stretch in the wind, and they will cease to retain your body heat in. Your gear will fail you, and causing you to be cold, wet, and miserable. Even in nice weather, such as your 65 or 70 degree days, once it starts raining, it gets really chilly on your bike. Gear shouldn't just keep you dry, but also warm. If you're wet but warm, that's better than being wet and cold. Cold temperatures have their unique problems, such as causing numbness, muscle fatigue, and slow mobility on the bike. When you add being wet to the cold, you're mixing a cocktail for failure. You're gonna start to become fatigued. When things are wet, they also become slippery. Foot pegs, the shift lever, the front levers, and the hand grips all become very slippery and can be hard to hold on to. If you wear leather gloves, your hand can slip inside of them, causing you to overthrottle or slip off the bars or levers. Be mindful of that. 
And our last item is the mentality. Riding the rain requires mental preparation. It's more than just knowing that you simply have to do things different, it's also doing them that matters. If you don't practice or apply the specific skills for riding the rain, then you're gonna become a risk to yourself. Remind yourself that everyone once had to ride in the rain for the very first time. Slow things down, keep your bike as upright as possible, and give yourself room to maneuver, stop and accelerate, don't overreact, and be calm. If you're not ready to ride in the rain, then don't. If you wanna wait until you have the proper gear or you need new tires, then just wait it out. Don't push yourself into a situation where you could go down and it could have been avoidable. Prepare yourself, your bike, and your gear, and you'll have no issues when you finally have to ride in the rain. But I do strongly recommend that you do eventually ride in the rain. It's a great experience in and of itself. You'll learn and become a better rider. Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. How many guys ride in the rain no matter what? And how many of you squids know your flip-flops won't protect your wet feet on a turbo busa? What are your rainy day experiences? Let everyone know in the comments, someone out there is only doing wheelies in the rain, guaranteed. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Fact. The quietest room in the world is the anechoic chamber at Orfield Laboratories in Minnesota. The room's background noise is measured in negative decibels, negative 9.4 dBA to be exact. The room is so quiet you will hear your heartbeat and other organs so loudly that you won't be able to stay in for over 45 minutes. Goodbye.